Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Frame Rate is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 1 million high quality video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code FRAMERATE9. Episode 139. I'm Tom Merritt. This is the show that thinks you should be able to watch the stuff you love when you want, where you want, however you darn well want, on whatever device you choose. And we aim to give you the info you need to do that. Brian Brushwood. Dude, that sounded that sounded like uh like I was like, am I on NSFW? Is Bizarro Brian Brushwood hosting this thing? That was a very that was your peppiest introduction yet. It's Tom the new Merritt. sauce for the frame weights. <laughs> I'm like, no. hey man, pep is my department. That is surely <laughs> I'm on, I'm ignorance is, is, I'm, is me. I'm very, I'm you bring the sorry. knowledge. Brian, I'm sorry. Uh, hey sorry. man, that's that's fine. Yeah, see, now we're back on tempo. Uh <laughs> that was uh that was from uh, TV Norge. Uh, people sent that. The whole internet sent that video to me. Yes. Uh, what does the fox say? And I, I laughed the first time I saw it, and that was it. Uh, and you know, most impressive well, thing about ahead. that video meme to me, Brian, yeah. is that Popular Science had an article up about what foxes actually do say within eight hours of that meme, uh, with eight, in eight hours of that YouTube video posting. That's brilliant. Well, I mean, yeah. that's the wave, right? And it's like it makes me wonder depending on how sustained the intention or the the intensity on that is, uh, that'll determine how fast we see a parody of it. Like, you know, what does the quail say? There, I did that one first. What does the quail say? There. I tell you what I want to know. I want to know what J.J. Valentine has to say. He's our guest on this episode of Frame Rate from the Valentine cast. J.J., how's it going, man? Pretty good. I say, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> what does Infinitely the J.J. say? Preferable. That's what we want to know. I do. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thanks but, for joining us. Uh, I've been wanting to get JJ on the you. show since I, he was nice enough to have me on Valentine Cast a while back, and I had a great time. And Brian, you're gonna you're gonna get swept into that show. I have a feeling. Yeah, it's all part of your cabal to eventually have everyone on the entire internet appear on on JJ. Uh, <laughs> wait, Valentine Cast? Is that what it is? Yes, that's <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, I'm there. Done. Fine. <laughs> Excellent. Yep, yep. It's like an Amway meeting in here. Fine. Awesome. Let us. Awesome. Proceed to the big story, then. This just in, the big story. Because honestly, what's really going on is this is an uh, frame rate is an excuse for us to get to the spoiler zone and talk about Breaking Bad. But let's start off. <laughs> Boy, uh, this it's week been two it is, weeks. That's for sure. <laughs> it's we been do. Two weeks. I would think we would have bigger stories going into two weeks. I mean, not that not that we're not going to have a good time over the next hour, and there's a lot of insight, but um, uh, no no groundbreaking face melting stories, as far as I could tell, right? Not really. No, it was a it, usually the big story is really obvious. We've had two weeks off. Part of that is the end of August with slow news, and and I guess CBS and Time Warner coming to peace on September second. I think it was uh, is is a is a big deal. September third. And everyone seems to think CBS must have won, that Time Warner finally blinked. That's kind of the conventional wisdom, is that the networks always win these things. CBS was asking for $2 a sub for their stuff. They probably got at least something close to that. The big fight really was over digital rights and whether Time Warner would have to pay extra to be able to stream CBS properties digitally to their subscribers. And they probably did that too. We don't know what the deal was. They Neither side has admitted that. But Time Warner will be 
adding Showtime and other CBS programming to its digital app. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, the escalation of the arms race on this one, because first, you know, Time Warner says, fine, we're not going to carry it because we don't want to pay your outrageous fees. But then CBS up the ante, you're like, well, double fine. Uh, whenever somebody joined, comes to CBS on the Internet, wants to authenticate through uh, with their Time Warner account, it's no longer valid with us. So there. And uh, a couple of the articles made a really good point that in these things, th these Mexican standoffs, uh, nobody ever gets frustrated. The longer they go, the more it benefits the networks because nobody ever gets so frustrated like, oh, I'm so mad. That's it. I'm done with CBS style programming and then marching off. It's like, no, what they do is they they go off and look for another uh, provider who will actually give them the content that they want. Um, I, I got to tell you, man, it's like, I mean, good, I guess good for them for, for figuring stuff out. But uh, keep in mind what the, the part that stuck out to me on this story is that it said they came to an agreement that involved a much higher carriage fee for, uh, for, you know, for CBS to get. But it says that it would be phased in over a number of years, which and that I think that's what really bummed me out is for all of our excitement about the cord cutting revolution, about, you know, new media making possible all of these different types of programming. The powers that be are making decades long deals because they know that they're still going to be in control and nothing's going to change. It's like, I don't know, I, I, this whole thing, the fact that it's the same fight we've seen before, the, th the fact that it's the same re resolution we've seen before, and that not only that, that they're taking a half decade view into the future to implement it just has me annoyed at all these jerks. JJ, I guess the other side of this would be to say, well, this is the last gasp, right? This is the, right. the, the stretch out to say, well, let's get as much as we can because we know this business model is not going to be around for much longer. Right, exactly. I, f I feel that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, we kind of went through the same thing here in Louisville when Fox and CBS, I mean, not C Fox and um, Time Warner were fighting it out as well. And, and that's exactly what they're going through right now. They're like, let's get as much of it as we can. You know, as you know, as much money as we can. I definitely feel like that's that's the case. It's it's uh, it's uh, that, that's my feeling about it, right? And uh, in a way, Brian, this this makes me excited. This makes on. me excited that they're that they're like at the end times, right? You're going to hoard as much food as possible before because you know the apocalypse is coming. To see now that's them going to such great lengths. The longest delay I think maybe we've ever seen or the longest removal of a big channel like this that we've ever seen. And, and the hardest fight implies to me that the clock is almost run out on this stuff. Now, wow, that's a that's a very optimistic way to look at it. And, and I, I stand corrected. Uh, in fact, I'll leave it to the to the listeners on whether or not the protracted nature and the the increased intensity of this battle is an indication that things are just as screwed as they've ever been or an indication that that it's all about to, you know, close up on them. Yeah, Meanwhile. I mean, I, I, I just think about, you know, with, with what's going on with Apple and them thinking about doing the trade-up program, you know, because they feel that pressure as well, even though it's not TV. But they, they the, you know, powers that be are trying to figure out new ways to make make that money, you know, or <laughs> as, as Tom said, get as much as they can while they can. Lock that stuff down before it all gets swept out to sea. <laughs> Let's uh, move on to another big story. Stop everything. It's another big story. Sony this morning on a live stream in Japan unveiled a set-top box. Uh-huh. That's kind of interesting. It's called the PS Vita TV. It is actually meant to play PlayStation Vita games, those mobile games, on your television. But it has a PlayStation controller. It will be able to remotely stream Sony PS4 games when the PS4 comes along. This will be coming to Japan November 14th, and they're being cagey about whether it's going to come to North America. But the interesting thing to us, for this show anyway, is that it's going to have video services on it. It'll have Hulu in Japan. It will have some of the other Japanese video services. One would think if a North American version did come, it would probably come with Netflix, since Netflix is available on the PlayStation 3. Okay, now, uh, the, the article that I read said that it connects to the PlayStation 4, allowing you to play games remotely from the PS4 in another room. Um, is that true PS4 games? Like you've got, uh, you got watchdogs in the other room and you're able to play it in your bedroom over it? Yeah. Or is it only it's pretty much select just Vita just, stuff? It's an extender. Uh, and as far as I can tell, anything that you can play on the PS4, it'll just mirror it over to I'm, your... 
keep in mind, I'm okay with all of this. This this is this is awesome to me because any way that we can expand a single device into a you know a hub and spoke type thing throughout the entire house, I, I think is a good idea. The only thing, um, uh, my guess is that you can't play two different PS4 games at the same time. Or uh, when it comes to television, so like if somebody's in the living room, they can't be watching Hulu on the PS4 while also you watch Netflix in the bedroom or they probably no, didn't think, get into I any think, of that. I think the TV ne- the TV apps, uh, it's Tsutaya TV in Japan and Hulu are actually available on demand on the box. So that's then not that's a sharing. Great. It's only the it's only the games, the PS4 games that it streams because it doesn't have the capability to actually play the games. Okay, now even if all this thing did was just Roku like services, uh and it was just branded, that would be the lazy way that they could phone this in and it, you know, kind of vaguely logged in through your PS4 or something like that. A lot of people would roll their eyes, but I'm okay with that because I think what a lot of consumers really crave is a single ecosystem that they can that they can set up through everything and have everything work and have a familiar interface at every single device. The fact that it also gives you access to the PS4, unless you play Vita games, if both of those aspects are correct, uh, is huge for me. And I think it 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 shows. You know, I've been an advocate for a long time of the of embracing the fact that while the consoles got into our living rooms based on the novelty of video game playing, and and for decades we talked about graphics or so on. We are really in in many ways a post graphics era. Uh, to where now, and even a post gameplay era, we don't we're, we're familiar with most of the types of stories that that are good to tell through video games, and now we are in a uh, oh crap, we have these powerful supercomputers in living rooms. Why are they not handling all media? Uh, and and again, this could be the kind of thing that gets us closer to, even if it's in a trapped ecosystem, even if it's in a walled garden. It seems to me like a house with a bunch of uh, vitas. And all of the the digital rights and and buy and and deals that are worked out with Sony are going to be the the ones that you get closest to our vision of watching whatever want you want whenever you want on whatever screen you want. I, I know for me, I, I'm actually very excited about it. Um, as a our house is a PlayStation house, a Sony house, and I have pretty much every streaming device that that's been out. And I'm I'm looking forward to getting the PS Vita TV. I mean, I, I can hear my wife now yelling at me not to bring another streaming device in, but <laughs> definitely. I mean, just I, I I'm a PS Vita owner. Being able to play my PS Vita games, some I've actually enjoyed those games more. Um, be able to join, enjoy those games on a big screen TV as well as being able to use that TV in my office as a streaming device. I mean, it, it seems like a no brainer for me. And it's uh well in in Japan it's going to be something like nine thousand four hundred eighty yen, but that translates to about ninety five bucks U.S. So one would assume if it did come to the United States, it would come for around ninety nine bucks, around, around that same price. What is interesting here is don't forget Japan's not getting the PS4 until February. The right. U.S. is getting the PS4 in November. Instead, Japan's getting the PS Vita. Which can stream PS4 games, but they're not getting a PS4 in Japan. So it's is uh, that's confusing. Is this the first time? Is this the first time that's happened that a, that a Japanese console maker has released a console in no. the United States before Japan? Definitely not the first I, time. Although I don't think it usually does happen that way. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, or at least it's, it's the first time I've noticed that, that, that they've said <laughs> that. It's really interesting to see the PS Vita come and have them be so like. When people ask them, is it going to come to North America? They're just like, well, we're not talking about that right now. Instead of like, oh, yeah, we'll definitely be coming down the road. So, I, so do I, you I think that this is uh, – now, why wouldn't they want to immediately announce that it would – do you think this is this is born of a study that says, oh, this is how uh, Japanese consumers like to consume their media? And we think that this PS Vita extender will be a hit for Japanese families, but we don't know that it will be a match. Or do you think it's a, a rights thing where it's like it's going to complicate things? I wonder to, uh, what if, it's, multiple if, devices? if, there, if there's a rights element to it or if it's somehow for some other reason they can't bring the PS4 to Japan or they don't want to bring the PS4 to Japan where they have to bring it to the United States because of the holiday season. They don't want to miss out on that. Maybe they're just not ready to produce that many. I don't know. And so this is a way to say, aha, but Japan, you're getting something cool and, cl- and start starting with a new PS Vita that's slimmer and this PS Vita TV that nobody else anywhere can get it. Who knows if they'll ever get it? Maybe that just stokes those fires a little. But I think it's interesting to see it as a Sony set-top box 
opportunity as well. That That mm -hmm. is something that Microsoft was rumored to do, but didn't. They were supposed to be doing an Xbox extender that would be a set-top box. And Microsoft's the one that's always positioning themselves as the, the home entertainment champion. And yet Sony yeah. is outdoing them here. I think that's really interesting, too. Uh, tell you what, also on the subject of Sony, their new Google TV is what kind of set-top box, Tom? It's dongle. It's not a set-top box. The, uh, no. This is their, uh, their NSZ in fact, in fact, none of them are set-top boxes, one. Brian. They all go under the flat-screen TV. Nobody puts a box on top of their flat-screen TV. So they're all yeah, missing. But, 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 but now we get to say the word dongle, which is well, just the best word to say. That's dongle. all Dongle. Dongle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is their NSZ GU1. Man, Sony, they just they just have names that roll off the tongue, man. Uh, their Google TV. Uh, they well, basically... to be fair, this is this is based on a filing with the FCC, so that this is probably not what they'll end up calling it when it comes to market. I don't know, man. <laughs> Sony loves their letters and numbers combinations. I still have my PC5 number something uh, uh, digital video camera over here, uh, but uh, but I guess this whole thing leaked because. There was a there was a photo that said do not lift your television by the dongle uh, <laughs> which <laughs> when they updated the FCC dirtier pilot, than I yeah. meant it for it too. Yeah yeah. <laughs> well, that's what they wrote dude. It. What they wrote. It's it says here scroll on down there Jason take a look there <laughs> basically it's got a picture of a guy improperly holding a TV by the dongle <laughs> and that's uh we recommend that you don't do Children, that. Children do not do this at home. Uh it is interesting that it has a MHL and HDMI pass through. So it's a, a little bit Chromecast, a little bit Roku stick, and it is a Google TV device that will be competing with the Chromecast. It'll be interesting to see if once this thing actually does get announced, it comes to market, like what features it has, how much it'll cost. But so let, in let Japan, me ask you anyway, this, Tom. PS Vita beating it to market. So uh, let me ask you this. Uh, if, if this thing, uh, let's say the trend seems to be everyone's moving to dongles because you've got uh, a smaller form factor. You, I'm sure it's more efficient to, to, uh, to mass produce and so on. Uh, it seems like it crowds up that space so that you can only put one in there. And also it makes me rethink my position because you and I have argued before about integrating devices into the television. Um, it, like at some point, it just gets small enough that it does make sense to just integrate it to the TV. But I, I can't get around the um, the refresh cycle problem that we had talked about before, where people only buy TVs like every seven years, but you would upgrade these devices every two or three years. Well, that's easily solved. You just you just make your HDMI ports on future TVs, so it's easy to take one of these dongles and slot it in, right? I don't think that's right. a big deal. Also, this has HDMI pass-through, so you can daisy-chain something else to it and send the oh, HDMI weird. signal through the same thing. Uh, so it's... so. That that's just form factor stuff. Once something gets popular enough, that stuff usually works itself out. Right on. I'm, I'm more of a, a quick... fan of. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, JJ. No, I'll say I'm more of a fan of not having something extra inside my TV. I mean, I'm not a huge smart TV person. That's just one more item that can break. Yeah, I, I like the standalone part of that. If I break a thirty-five dollar piece, I don't have to pay, you know, John to come out and fix it for two hundred. So. I run the Battlestar Galactica of televisions. I have no network connectivity at all. It's all it's all external. There's nothing, no yep. internet, no Ethernet. As well it should in be, my dude. Television. Silence yeah, I totally will not agree. Bring my television down. <laughs> I will not have a network set top device in this room while I'm watching Breaking Bad. <laughs> but if we did right. want to get a photo of of you like really angry and like okay, let's say I wanted to make a movie about uh, or 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 a hilarious Photoshop. Of, of Captain, um, and I don't want it to look like it's going to be a parody of Battlestar Galactica, but I don't want it to obviously be like you photoshopped onto there. Uh, let's say we needed it to look like your living room, look like you had set-top boxes, and have some kind of robots in the background. Wait, would I have to go out and build robots in order to make this happen? Oh, well, you could use our sponsor for today's show, Shutterstock.com. They have all kinds of, like, B-roll footage of robots and anything else you can think of. But I think, yeah, but what is it, a million I high-quality stock video clips? I'm sorry. It sounded like you said a million. Yeah, I did. I said well, they've got clips. one million. They're, they're like 2D, 3D animation, motion graphics, or anything you can think of. Robots too. Uh, wow. In fact, um, uh, type in robots. Well, I want to see the robots they got. Well, now I'm seeing human eyes. What? And I'm seeing dancing robots. Look at that. That was yeah, super that's really easy. Robot eyes. I made now, your okay, eyes. Now, okay. Fine. They got a whole bunch of. Uh, you got a million clips, but are they good, Tom? Well. 
they actually have professional contributors, first of all, Brian, and they review each video individually for content and quality before adding it to the library on the same, at the same time. They add over 10,000 video clips a week. So you're okay, always so going to find new, new stuff. Made by professionals, reviewed and curated by real human beings, no robot Cylons, and over 10,000 new a week. Uh, how yep. do I get my hands on this? I want to play around with this. And I'd like to support our own show if there's some way that's possible. I can take care of all those things for you. Shutterstock recently partnered with Facebook to provide advertising customers free access to all its images through Facebook's ad creation tool. That it's what? a great resource for local businesses that want professional looking ads. But even if you're not using Facebook, you can try Shutterstock today by signing up for a free account. No credit what? card needed, Brian. You don't put that credit card back in your pants, buddy. You just oh. start an account. Begin using Shutterstock to help imagine what your next probably put your robot things in there. Send me the link so I can look through them and go, yeah, I like that one. That one's good. You might want to try that one. And then once you decide to purchase, use the offer code FRAMERATE9 and new accounts receive 30% off any package. Any package. Uh, wait, 30% off and you get to support us here at FRAMERATE? Mm-hmm. Both things. Both of the amazing things in life are available here. 30% off new accounts and an offer code FRAMERATE9 that says, I support FRAMERATE. By going right. to Shutterstock. Talk. Done and done. You sold me. Now what am I going to do with all these robots that I just built? You're going to let them help you talk about the slipstream. <laughs> Yahoo launched a, an app for their screen service that gives you access to video clips for iOS. It's pretty interesting, Mr. Brushwood. I've got it right here. I'm going to try to... Uh, Oh, is that what off. you were showing off in the show? This is what I was playing I was around with when you were that. Yeah. show. Yeah. So, uh, of course, it's, there we go. So you've got all these different channels. The channels are, remember we talked about them getting Saturday Night Live clips? They've got all these Saturday Night Live clips in here now. They've got Comedy Central. They did a deal with Viacom. Then they got stuff like The Onion and Pop Sugar and ABC okay, News. This, I am I mean, so wired, glad you did mashable. this. I'm so glad you did this, Tom, because when I just read the article, it made it sound like it was a discovery app. That would pretty much just tell you what's trending in the comedy world. And you would just go from popular clip to popular clip. And I thought, well, who does that? But the fact that it's separated essentially by comedy channels, you know, it's like you just got all these. Uh, it, it gets us back to that iconic TV watching experience with channels. And I assume when it finishes one clip, it goes straight into the next one. Uh, yeah. In fact, let me see if I can. Can I fast forward this one to the end? And it's still got still got a little bit. But, you know, you, it's actually really well designed. It's got nice controls. Uh, you can and you can easily once you get used to the icons, you can go in there and find out, you know, what the different things are. It took me a while to find pop sugar, but once I figured out, oh, okay, that's what the star means. And if you're familiar with the with the property, you're going to go to it right away. I'll we'll see if see if uh, this thing ever gets to the end. Uh, yeah, no, I, okay, there we go. So we're wrapping up the interview right now, and hopefully it'll go straight into the next clip. Um, there it is. I'm very, right into the next Look clip. at that. So, okay. And the other thing you can do I, is like, oh, you know what? I already saw this one. Swipe onto the next clip. Oh, wow. Wow, that's smooth. And is this, uh, this is on just iOS or Android as well? Right now, it's just on iOS. They, there's the usual like Android in development. That really looks slick. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you what. I, the more I think about it, the more I think it's smart for um, for Yahoo to have made this uh, this uh, brand association with comedy clips, you know, we talked about how Yahoo got the exclusive to the uh, to the back catalog of SNL clips. Um, I I think it's a good job of of uh, you know zagging where Google zigs. You know, Google has it feels very sterile environment. Uh, you know, YouTube notwithstanding, you think of cat clips or whatever. But if Yahoo can be a a more uh, character comedy driven brand, I think this is a smart move for them to do. Oh yeah, I mean that that app looks real nice. I'm I'm excited to try it out. I was I was with Brian also when I read it. I thought it was gonna be something like um, discovering new TV and and new uh, new comedy clips. And I was like, eh, I don't have time for that. But it looks really slick because a lot of stuff that's out there is stuff that I, I would be interested in. So I'm I'm excited. I'm excited well, especially it. if they can get to a place where they dominate a certain category. If they can get yeah. to a place where the reputation is such that if you know there's some new funny clip blowing stuff up you know that you're very and it's from television uh or even if it's not because the onion's not not television then then you know that you could probably find it on yahoo uh it's a smart move it's a, it's a, it's a small step in the right direction for them oh, yeah 
and on mobile, which everybody in the stock market anyway is excited to see any company doing anything innovative in mobile. Hulu is getting back episodes of The Good Wife, which probably, I don't know if you guys watch, but is incredibly popular on CBS. And remember, CBS is the odd man out. They have no new episodes of anything, only older episodes, and sometimes really old, like Hawaii Five-0 original series, Star Trek, the original series, stuff like that. So last season of Good Wife is a big addition of one of CBS's prime properties to Hulu. Yeah, and it's funny. It's a two-way street, isn't it? Because it's like none of us know to be excited about it. I don't know about you guys, but I haven't watched The Good Wife. So it's like I get this news. I'm like, well, should I be excited? But the reason I'm not excited is because previously it was unavailable and I never gave it a chance. And so it's that it's that uh, interaction with Discovery that goes back and forth um, with uh, with the propagation of it. I, have you watched this, JJ? I haven't. I have not. I mean, um, with it being in the news now, now I feel like I need to go watch it. So I definitely, uh, where we subscribe to Hulu Plus, so definitely it'll probably be on our list to watch, see how good it yeah. is. Now, earlier this evening, I was watching KXCIN Local News Austin, Brian what? Rushwood. And you know how yeah. I was doing it? Over what, the yeah, new live stream app on Roku. Oh, sweetness. So, okay, this is this is one of the, I think the live streaming space is one of the, the bigger gray areas, one of the last places that where it really is still a land grab for brand because you don't think of a certain service. And the fact that there are more competitors jumping into this is really good news. Live stream, you know, mostly I, I tend to think of Justin.tv and Ustream uh, for these, but the fact that live stream's got a presence on there, that's rad, man. Live stream, the new live stream app on Roku is really interesting too because it's taking them and saying, you know, we're no longer going with a linear channel model, which is what live stream used to do. We're going to say we can have multiple live streams up at once and we're just going to tell you here's what's live, here's what's coming up. And they do big things. They do like Oscar red carpet live streams. They also do a bunch of local television news channels that are just those secondary channels you get on over the air HD broadcasts that are just always doing news. Those sure. are the kinds of channels you get there. It was really interesting. I watched some Washington, D.C., some Madison, Wisconsin, some Austin. Uh, pretty cool stuff. And then they have TED Talks, New York Times chats, uh, like some pretty quality stuff there. Now, right. this is the interesting thing because, you know, the, the whole reason that they're doing this is so you can watch live, of course. But, uh, but, but these services all have archives of it, uh, you know, going back a long way. Um, it, it, do you think that poses a challenge for them to define what their service is is it live or is it, uh, I, I guess it's the same problem that YouTube had uh, where, you know, as they move into the live space, you, I, just nobody I know thinks of YouTube as the place to watch anything live. That confused you, Gentlemen. JJ? Hmm. I, I, I think, I don't think there are people, I don't think there's going to be an issue with them getting confused with that. Honestly, I mean, um, what, what they do and stuff like that, I feel like that they'll be fine and, 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 and with, with doing that. So JJ I think, I think, says, quit your crying, Brushwood. <laughs> I think one of the cool <laughs> things about this is the fact that people talk about live as being one of the reasons to keep traditional TV. And granted, right. this isn't going to have all the live things people are talking about when they say that. But it is one of the premier live streamers out there. And they now have a beautiful app. And I thought it was also interesting. They said, we went with Roku because it's the most widely available and it had the easiest architecture to develop on. Now, that's right, interesting. Yeah. Obviously, I, I knew it was the most popular and the best known, but I didn't know that the architecture was particularly easy for developers. Yeah, they're like, we'll get to Xbox and Sony eventually, too, but those are closed systems. So a lot easier yeah. to develop on that open platform that Roku gives you. Yeah, Roku, Which, their, their, their architecture is very, very easy to develop on. Um, I have a little experience with that. So make some private channels and stuff. So it's, it's really, really easy to use. Right on. Let's move on to the tube tops. Remember when we had that big controversy about how Comcast wasn't going to count the data for the app that delivered their shows to your Xbox 360? Well, guess what? Time Warner Cable doing the exact same thing. Not going to count the data against your cap. Not all Time Warner customers have caps, unlike Comcast. But if you do have a cap and you use the Time Warner app to watch television through your Time Warner cable TV subscription. It's not going to count against your data cap. Now, this is insidious. Now, uh, I'm going to put on my conspiracy theory hat for just a little bit. Uh, the, the reason, okay, the, the argument is like, does the government need to intervene on behalf of net neutrality and so on? And I, I believe that the government does not have to, and uh, as long as everybody 
as long as net neutrality remains that third rail, as long as traffic shaping remains utterly taboo that the moment they touch it, the entire Internet explodes with rage. Comcast already has cable uh, uh, has caps, comes in and says, uh, hey, man, these won't count towards your caps. Like, how does anyone get really mad about that? They, uh, nobody rises up and say, no, we want we want it to count against our cap. Right. So it's it's smart because they start injecting this traffic shaping uh, right from the get go by saying, no, 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 this is private IP, uh, not the actual Internet. Separately, though, you have Time Warner that most of their markets doesn't even, don't even have a cap, right? So it's like if there is no cap and they say, hey, this won't count towards your cap, now you got people say, wait, do I have a cap? Oh, no, I don't. Oh, I don't care. Fine. So now, now that they're, now it seems to me like this is a brilliant way for Time Warner to put themselves in a position to say, hey, it's been a few years. We're going to introduce caps, but don't worry. Here's all those things that you're already protected on. We've already made it, so most of you won't be affected. It's only those damn dirty cord cutters who are using, you know, whatever services at all times. I mean, is is, is it crazy for me to think that this is part of a long-term strategy to introduce caps? Or is this clear just a short-term, like, uh, uh, promote their own services thing? I, I don't I think so. I, I, I can see where you're coming from. And I, I absolutely believe that's possibly what's going to it's going to happen um, as far as Tom Warner. They're going to try to slot it in. Like you said, kind of get people used to using the term um, Time Warner and caps in the same sentence. And, oh, it's not it's not going against my cap. And then, like you said, five years later, we're like, yeah, we're going to have to um, slide some caps in. <laughs> I, on the oh, other okay. hand, think you're crazy, Brian. I don't, I don't <laughs> really? think this is a part of any conspiracy at all. What the, Especially because it's not like they're going to be going into markets where they don't have caps and say, hey, the new app doesn't count against your cap, because then people go, shit, I have a cap? I'm going to cancel my yeah. service now, right? That's the other side of it, is all of a sudden people have a negative, because what these companies have found out when they've tried to roll out caps is everyone hates them, and everyone hates the company, and it reduces their ability to market to people, even when they have a de facto monopoly. So... I, I really think people overreact because we all hate cap so much. And anytime the word cap just gets up, we like we lose our minds. What this is is Time Warner saying, you know, we do still have caps in a few markets, and in the, we don't want to piss those people off. So we're gonna not count this against the cap because we think we can get away with it, and that way people will will take the app. Because you know what's more important? Not rolling out caps. What's more important is transitioning our business off of cable television and on to be an inter internet provider that provides digital television directly over the internet. I like that world a lot. And I hope <laughs> it's the real one, <laughs> is, is all I'm going to say. <laughs> real quickly, uh, out of the tube tops too, uh, if you're a simple TV fan, which I'm not, I have one. It's really clunky to use for live TV. It's okay for DVRing. Uh, but the, but the, the, it's very much a prototype. They've got a new one coming. Maybe this is the one that'll change my mind because I love the idea of Simple TV. Uh, new box, much more streamlined. It's going to have two tuners, so you can watch something live and record something at the same time. And uh, they're going to update the software, not just for the, the new version 2.0 box, but also for the people like me who have the original one. Uh, that's awesome. And I was really disappointed. In fact, that was my question was whether or not you uh, were a fan of the first Simple TV. Because as you know, I'm now actively shopping for a for a OTA DVR since uh, since I cut the cord. I feel so manly ever since that happened. But uh, something so that the kids can get their programming too. And right, I'm with Brian on this too. I, that's one of the reasons why I haven't cut the cord yet is my DVR. You know, that's one of the things that, uh, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss when we do cut the cord. And this may be an option for us. So... I'll be watching close, Brian, as you're searching for that OTA DVR. OTA Let's move on to Film Town. Netflix is doubling down on comedy. They're going to have an Aziz Ansari comedy special coming straight to Netflix, as well as a documentary uh, from... Russell Peters and a Russell Peters comedy special. So you got three out of these. Uh, Aziz Ansari, of course, from Parks and Rec. Russell Peters, you probably have seen on Comedy Central, on The Daily Show, as well as many other places. Netflix really following in HBO's footsteps here. Yeah, now uh, this is, uh, again, Netflix continuing to take steps right out of the HBO playbook. You know, they, they start with uh, high-quality original programming and, of course, uh, HBO. 
made a name for itself with its comedy specials, and now uh, Netflix is doing the same thing. Is there any word? Is this closer to the um, – because uh, we had previously talked about Aziz Ansari owning and developing his own comedy special on his own to put it uh, out there. I, I assume this is the same one, right? Uh, well, he also – provides his own specials and he sells them for five dollars this new deal for buried alive will have it go to netflix first and then once it's premiered on netflix he'll be able to sell it for the five dollar downloads so i believe now, this is different than the one he's done previously just tell me this like do you predict windowing like is this because the more this happens the no. closer it starts to look like what we've seen you think that this no. is that that the old way All is this dead. is saying aziz please don't sell the five dollar downloads till after we've put it on netflix don't put don't start okay. selling it before let's premiere it at the same time i think that's all this is that, and oh, that dude, makes that's sense. great then. yeah absolutely what I'm about you jj fan. are you are you uh, following this oh yeah I'm, I'm a huge fan of aziz and everything else and i'm looking forward to seeing this you know being able to watch it on Netflix and not have to, you know, already it's already wrapped into my um, subscription. So I'm look I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm excited about it. Netflix is doing a great job with their original content. Right Chris on. Carter has struck a deal with Amazon, and this is your tr model being more traditional, Brian. He's got to make a pilot, and he's got to run it through the Amazon Studio, and then the Amazon Studio will decide whether to green light it or not. I can't decide if I'm happy Chris Carter or unhappy. Or by the way, if you don't, if you didn't recognize the name, Chris Carter. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not. I, I can't decide if I'm happy or unhappy that we're starting to see more and more the tradition or the trappings of traditional media happening. We're attracting more of traditional media talent to new media, but along with that, we're seeing a lot of the structures that 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 we may not like. Um, and it, I, I don't know. Is this a good sign? Is this a sign of maturity? Is this a sign that we're be, that 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 the quality of content is just going to get better and better, or is it a sign that uh, new boss same as the old boss, JJ? Uh, I think it's the um, sign of the old boss still the new boss, or, or however you said it. <laughs> I, I think that's the I think that is the case of what we have going on here. I mean, because I mean, having to make a pilot and stuff like that, you know, it, it, I guess they just want to make sure they're um, they're getting their money's worth, you know. Well, and that's the thing, right? Pilots are extremely expensive. And so as a result, when, you're, when your strategy for your studio is to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on uh, 20 pilots, knowing that one of them is likely to become a mega hit that'll make you billions of dollars, then mm -hmm. you tend to play to the middle. You, tr you tend to go with safe programming. Whereas, right. um, you know, kind of our, it seems like our hope for a lot of this programming is that because the, it's a much more efficient model, that you're able to take bigger risks and do more outrageous stuff quicker. But but as we see this, it just, it, it, again, it just feels, I'm not saying it will be bad. I'm sure there's certain things about it that will inherently be more daring or interesting uh, or unusual. But um, I, I just don't know how I feel about it looking more like traditional television. Right. By the way, Russell Peters has never been on The Daily Show. I think I, I was having an aneurysm. When I said that, but you you should really so. get that looked at, Tom. That's not healthy. <laughs> if you're having, I don't know a, why I said if, that. I, seriously, if you're having an aneurysm, to, to be, seek medical Russell attention. Russell Peters, is, is, don't, if don't you finish, think Russell Peters has been on the, the Daily show. show? Seek medical attention immediately. <laughs> uh, Hulu announced Tuesday that it has teamed up with a studio to create ten episodes of Deadbeat. Uh, Lionsgate is the studio. Lionsgate are the folks who bring you Mad Men and Nurse Jackie, and now they're going to be making a show for Hulu about. New York ghosts and a medium who helps them. Right, right on, man. It's it's again, this is it's good. You got you got quality talent coming in. This is exciting for everyone, I think. You know, I, I just love the fact that Lionsgate, I remember you Lionsgate was like an underdog for a few years. I, am, or, or am I the only one that ever that thought that? I mean, at one point. I mean, because I remember at one point a lot of the movies that, you know, I'm a Tyler Perry fan, but a lot of his movies were Lionsgate. And and seeing these guys, I mean, at Lionsgate producing the great movies, I mean, great shows like Mad Men, Orange is the New Black, Nurse Jackie. I mean, I mean, I I just I'm excited about it. I'm I'm just really glad that they're doing the original content for these streaming services. Well, yeah, it's a really good point, JJ, because I think for a long time Lionsgate was like, well, they make really good stuff, but nobody ever watches it. It's not right, going to be commercially right. successful. Now the the worm has turned, right? It's like, oh, really good stuff can be successful thanks to HBO and AMC and now Netflix and Hulu mm -hmm. and Amazon. So right. it's uh, the world has moved to where Lionsgate has been for a long time, I feel like. JJ, are you familiar with our scan lines segment here on Frame Rate? Uh, just, 
Is this the one where we do the one minute? Per, 60 per, seconds. Yeah. Per, yeah. Per 60 seconds. Yeah. I, I'm very familiar. Who should go first, me or Brian? Brian. Brian, you go first. Gonna, here we I go. I was going to read. Okay, all right. Here we go. Let's uh, let's talk Vivo. First of all, Vivo's music finds their growth uh, groove on uh, television's talk, talk, uh, music. Talk. Oh, there we go. Uh, music video site's latest half-year viewership report shows that for it to build on its area of greatest growth, Vivo path Vivo Vivo's path forward follows a throwback. Uh, basically, it's, this article is talking about how Vivo is like MTV, and just like MTV, they're learning to go international with their market. Uh, keep in mind, like uh, uh, Vivo is is this far and away the most popular channel uh, sub channel on YouTube. But and I couldn't get a read on whether it's total staggeringly large numbers were the uh, the Vivo website and the YouTube channel combined, or just the Vivo website. Did you did you get a sense of that, Tom? Four billion streams in June. I think that's meaning the Vivo website. Like they're getting it from their apps and from their website. That's amazing. What about you, JJ? Do you, do, would you go? Do you ever go to the Vivo website, or do you watch it all just the videos on YouTube? I watch them on YouTube. Um, is where I watch them. I, I hardly ever go to the website. Prepare yeah. for Vivo to start doing reality shows soon. <laughs> That's what I figure. Oh. Uh, broadcasters are cheering because Alki David's Film on X, which used to be called Barry Driller and also Aereo Killer, lost in a Washington, D.C. court decision. This Alki David product is very similar to Aereo. The only difference is it isn't region locked, but that doesn't seem to have mattered in the court cases. What's mattered is they've said this antenna extension cord idea doesn't wash. And so he won in California. He's a or he lost in California. He's appealing. Now he's lost in Washington D.C. and he's appealing. But that shuts Aereo out of two very important markets. Now, what is the benefit of being of antagonizing Aereo during this whole process? If they believe in it, shouldn't they shouldn't they want to legitimize it by by making a stink? Isn't he make, doing a bad thing? That's just Alki David being Alki David, and it's irrelevant to the court case. Uh, right. What, the, what what is relevant to the court case is he was trying to do the same thing as Ariel because he's like, I'm going to do it better. And he hasn't, at least not in court. So he's poisoning yeah. the well. I was Go, wait, 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 quick. I'm, legal I'm, I'm looking forward to Ariel. I don't want it to ruin that. Yeah. <laughs> so you say, you say stay out of my town, Alki. Uh, <laughs> what about 4K downloads? Are you down with the 4K, JJ? You know me. Oops. Oh, you know me, man. I'm always down with the 4K. So are you? Like, been, like, are you going to? Are you going to get a 4K TV? No, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have $12,000 like laying around? I, I do not. I do not. I got some stuff going on that I cannot afford that. But they say Sony's well, betting big on the 4K. Uh, and, yeah, um, they are. Sony's got the 4K downloads. Their video unlimited 4K service. You're able to download uh, over 100 by the end of the year. You can rent them for, uh, let's see, single show shows are $3.99. You could do movie rentals for eight bucks and with 24 hours. And uh, if you want to buy it, $29.99 gets you to own a 4K copy of a movie. That's it. What about you, Tom? Are you on board? You know, this this is the early days, right? And it's easy to poke fun at these numbers, the, the low number of downloads and the high price of buying a movie. But this is for early adopters. And it's the early adopter tax. Eventually, this will all become common. We'll be doing 4K. So we can do all the zoom in. That's what I think. And not only the TV, Enhance. you need a media player. That's true. Yeah, you yeah that's right. You got to have a device. But yeah, that's the PS4. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, here, Google you operating system blog spotted a remind me feature. I tried it out today and it works. Search for a television show, say Breaking Bad or Homeland or whatever. It will allow you to choose remind me and then Google through its Google Now service will remind you when new episodes of those shows hit the air. Now, this seems like a silly side feature that I wouldn't be interested in, except while we were out at Dragon Con, we were sitting there in the middle of some panel, and all of a sudden my phone buzzed, and Netflix says, oh, by the way, season three of Portlandia is available, just FYI. And I thought that was, I had never seen that before, and I thought that was incredibly useful. If that's what this is like, then then this is this is huge. I It basically says, yes, I want Breaking Bad to have a space in my brain from now on. I already have JJ? this. I already have this feature with Fanhattan, actually, so um, I, I'm, I'm glad it's there, it, but it doesn't plug into my Google now, so so I think it's pretty cool. Another option for folks to have. Yeah, yeah so if like, you I, use Google now a lot, this is going to be awesome. Yep. Uh, let's talk about the Apple TV box and how Apple's definitely going to introduce a new Apple TV next week. No, wait, they're totally not. You mean tomorrow? They're going to, 
Yes, whatever. I'm reading the old article headline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it tomorrow? Well, that's exciting. Yeah, it's tomorrow. Uh, the announcement's tomorrow morning. So basically, we're, we're not looking at new hardware. We're looking at very likely a uh, software update, whereas, you know, announcement after announcement window passes by and Apple still doesn't seem interested in giving us the Apple TV that we all imagine. Um Again, uh, unsur- is this going to be a problem for Apple? Are they missing their chance or does nothing change when they come back with the amazing device we'll all jump on? I know for me, I'm both happy and sad about it because I have an Apple TV too. That means I won't have to buy an Apple TV upgrade. Um, I'll, at least I hope that I'll be able to put this update on my Apple TV too. I think, I don't know, man. It's really confusing to me why they're not doing it. So, Tom. They haven't got it right yet. That's how Apple does things. If it's not right, they don't put it out. What we will see is iTunes Radio tomorrow, and then it'll be updated. Variety has an article from RBC Capital Markets or about RBC Capital Markets survey of 1,078 internet users finding that 43% of Netflix customers said original content was a moderately to extremely important factor influencing their decision to keep the service. 64% of Netflix subs say they had viewed original content over the last three months. However, new subscribers almost said, no way, there was no chance that new content made me subscribe to Netflix in the first place. Uh, Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Now now you done screwed me up here. Because I actually think this is a brilliant strategy. The fact that if there's always new originals coming that they, people know they can be excited about as long as that window's, you know, three, four, five months. You know, it's a pain in the ass to unsubscribe for something. And if they can keep you teased, like even if you don't dig this month's offering, you know, something around the corner, I think that's a smart thing to do to get people just accustomed to paying the tax always. But I don't believe anyone who says they didn't sign up for originals. They're awesome. Yeah. No, I think it's according- awesome. <laughs> no, go, ahead. go ahead. Take your extension. No. No, okay. Wait, no, wait. I was just saying, I know for me, I mean, I didn't get Netflix for for original content. I mean, I've been a member for a while. And just being able to, now getting the original content is like a huge bonus to me now. Because I've had it for so long. So, But, but you watch the originals, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I always thought it was funny that the, they did this um, poll right after Orange is the New Black and House of Cards. But... <laughs> Well, and of so course. now, but but like like, are you saying that the originals don't factor into your decision to continue to keep Netflix? Because I know for me, it's what sealed the deal. It's like the kids watch it, and I know that every few months there's something really awesome that I'm not going to have to sign up for another thing in order to see. Well, my queue is so huge right now. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow, brag you about know, it, why don't you? I know it's just just <laughs> humongous thing. Seventy four percent said the original content did not influence my decision at all to get Netflix. Seven percent said it influenced it a great deal. I, this makes sense to me. Basically, yep. Netflix users aren't attracted by these shows they're kind of barely aware of. But once they know about them, they stay. Yeah. All right. I believe that. Let us go to premiering this week. premiering this week. This is what's premiering this week. Check it out. Insidious Chapter 2 is premiering this week. Uh, Yeah, man. I'll tell you what. All I can think about is freaking uh, Gravity. Gravity is all the trailers I'm watching. Gravity is all the news I'm reading up on, all the early reviews I'm reading on. And that thing is a month of freaking way. I And the, the early buzz on it has been tremendous. So there's that. Let's talk about what we're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Gravity isn't premiering this week. Save it. You're watching. All right, JJ, go ahead. Tell us uh, first off, what have you been watching lately? Man, you will be happy that I've started the second season of Doctor Who. <laughs> um, so, what do you think of David um, Tennant? So I, yeah, well, yes, for David Tennant. So um, probably about two years ago, I started watching Doctor Who and I couldn't get into it. And then during Dragon Con, for some odd reason, Renee and I got a hankering for watching it. And we just absolutely loved it. And then so we've been watching probably like a, a show a night with David Tennant. Well, well, we're in the David Tennant series now. So we've been watching that on Netflix. Are you watching on, on Netflix? Yeah. Yep, on Netflix. Anything else? I, just Doctor Who all the time? Oh, man. So, oh, I keep going. Of course, been watching Breaking Bad. You know, I've been watching that live. So, <laughs> you know, oh, man, just that's, I think it's going to be my favorite part of the show tonight. Want to talk, All right. I'm talking about oh, that. Oh, save so. it, buddy. Hold on. I am. Uh, I've been watching, I watched The World's End. 
the the last of the Cornetto trilogy, How was it? Simon Pegg. It was fun. It was great. It's exactly what I wanted. I wanted another movie by those guys, Edgar Wright, Simon Pegg. And I got that. And it really fooled me because I knew that it was exactly like those, like starts out as a kind of a drama about human relationships and then twists into a, a sci-fi slash zombie slash whatever kind of movie. Uh, and I got, I still got fooled. They they played the joke a lot longer than I expected. And I was like, well, maybe I misread about the twist or maybe the twist is just really kind of minor or something. And then it hit full on and and right totally on. blew me away. I, I loved it. I thought it was really fun. That's fantastic. Uh, I continue to plow through the shield and uh, it does hold up and, and find myself weirdly like interested. Um, uh, but uh, but Breaking Bad is all that any one of us care about. We'll talk about Breaking Bad. In the you know, I don't have a hat close by, but I would like to take off my hat. Maybe I'll just pour some out for Futurama. Last episode. I'm not going to pour that out, but I will pour it out <laughs> later for Futurama. Last episode. And what was cool. And yes, I want to fully disclose, I'm partly saying this because my wife helped produce it. But what was cool was that after and before the last episode of Futurama, Comedy Central had Chris Hardwick talking to Matt Groening, uh, to other writers, members of the cast. Billy West was there about Futurama. And it was really fun after that last scene of Futurama to go to that live stream and spend a little more time with people who you can tell dearly loved working on that show. Yeah. Now, was this was this on television or this was on YouTube? It was on the it was on Comedy Central's website, produced out of the YouTube Space LA. Oh, that's fantastic! That's a cool uh, crossover where it's like um, yeah. I, I would not have in among the YouTube partners thought to include a big a big company like Comedy Central on there. Well, you can thank my wife. <laughs> thank you, Eileen. Thank you. <laughs> you want to do some feedback? Yes, let's do. Silent. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> it's people. We all we all know. Um, now it's, it's, it's time also time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Flame Radio. Yeah. Tom, I apologize. That was on me when I made that segue. It was not yet time for feedback. Jason now waited it's... for the appropriate time. Now well it's done, time for Jason feedback. Now. Yes. Uh, start with Brad San Antonio. Guys, you mentioned video game to movie franchises. What about the Resident Evil franchise? Seems like they've been pretty successful. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, man. That was that was one of the ones you remember in that segment we were talking about how, uh, you know, how, how low the bar is for video game movies. Uh, that was the franchise that I was having a hard time accessing at the moment. Uh, the number one uh, box office movie, it was uh, Laura Croft Tomb Raider. Uh, but I think like number four, I think like it has two or three presences in the top 10 for uh, for uh, money makers in video game movies. Um, Still, John Resident oh, Evil Retribution is only 30 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. And that's the best one. They're all less. All the others are less than that. Oh, for, for quality. I, I guess yeah. I was thinking in terms of box office. Depends on uh, what you mean. They yeah. Also, yeah, exactly. Uh, John says, hey, Brian and Tom, a few weeks ago, you mentioned that Southwest Airlines is now offering a free TV service on their Wi-Fi enabled flights. Just returned from a trip and wanted to let you know that the experience was surprisingly good. I was able to watch the opening Thursday night NFL game on my laptop live in the New York NBC feed until the battery died. Unfortunately, it didn't work on my Samsung Galaxy Note, but did work on my backup HTC G2 phone. It clearly states that not all Android devices are supported. The login process was simple. The picture quality was more than acceptable. Thank you, Southwest, and thank you, Dick Dish Network. Wow, that was close. Uh, love the show and keep up the great work. Oh. Thanks, John. <laughs> Wait, I'm what just sorry. Happened? I just saw a Twitter from Tony at Tony Retrobot who created a scan lines bumper for us. Like just the oh second. Oh my gosh, uh, dude! I want it. Can, can, can we see it? Uh, probably. All right, here, I'll read another, I'll read another, uh, I'll read another one while you get that taken care of. Jay in Ohio says, I went to my local movie store. Yes, my wife and I still rent movies from a store. And well, to my surprise, I found House of Cards on DVD. I thought Netflix had an exclusive on House of Cards. Why would it, uh, why would anyone want to sign up for network, Netflix for an exclusive content if, well, it is an exclusive for the record, we've tried Netflix and Amazon still prefer to rent movies, blah, 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 blah. Um, I, I, I I you can the word exclusive is a funny word, right? Because you you can have an exclusive premiere, uh, right. which Netflix certainly did, and uh, I and I believe this. they tended to say Netflix originals. All right, go ahead, Tom. The answer is Netflix 
commissioned Trigger Street and the other executive producers of House of Cards. Well, they didn't commission them. They said, you're going to make this series. We want to have it. We want it to be for Netflix, premiere on Netflix, and online, TV, whatever, exclusive to Netflix. But that's like saying like, wait a minute, that HBO series, which is exclusive to HBO, has DVDs. <laughs> what the heck? I thought it was right. exclusive. They never, Netflix didn't want to handle the DVDs. They didn't want to make the DVDs. So they said, look, you guys, once once we've had a good run, like a couple of months, go ahead and put your DVDs out. Uh, and, and so they did. And you can get the DVDs on Netflix if you're still a member of the Netflix DVD rental side of the, of the situation. But it's perfectly normal because Netflix is like, we're not a DVD making company. We don't even really want to be a DVD renting company for all that much longer. So all we want is the ability to show it over the streaming or the air. And if people still want to buy DVDs, you guys knock yourselves out, make some money off it. Right. Yeah, what a great way, that makes sense. What a, what a great way to give more money back to, to, to the creators of House of Cards and, and, and all the other great shows. I mean, so they keep making great TV. So I'm excited. Yeah. And again, it's not windowing because there wasn't a, well, you can, you, we won't allow it to go to on demand because we're going to have the DVDs come out. No, it was basically like it premieres on Netflix and then the DVDs can be sold whenever you feel it's ready. But it's that I mean, sure, is that windowing technically, but it's not the same complex windowing that we have, we have now. Right. Finally. To, yeah. yeah. Tom ahead, Welch. This one. You think of what I'm thinking reading a Tom Welch email? Because that's what yeah, I was well, thinking. That's what I was about to say. I was thinking. But yeah. Tom Welch received a Nielsen packet in the mail. Being curious, opened it up, decided to call them. The lady went through the normal information requests. When I asked if I when asked if I had cable, satellite or normal over the air signal, I told her I watched absolutely no live television. She didn't believe me since I have three TVs and not even one antenna. She asked how I watch my shows and movies. I told her that I watch live streams, podcasts, Netflix, Hulu Plus. I stream my old DVDs and Blu-rays from my PC and I had no desire or need to have television. She asked if how I watch sports, which I do, and I and I told her how usually on the computer or iPhone or AirPlay to TV, uh I told her it was pointless because the networks don't care what I watch on Netflix because they are getting paid by Netflix to allow them to have the rights to that content. Basically, the lady seemed very unaware of how content can be viewed on the internet only. So, uh, look. Go, you know, go ahead. I mean, yeah, uh, no, I, I think that it's possible that the person you were talking to really wasn't aware because it's not important to their job because they don't rate that stuff in her department. They are rating this sort of stuff in other departments. And even then, it's very experimental. It's also possible that because she's a good survey employee, you're not supposed to bias the results of answers, even from the sign-up portion, that she may have been saying very generic things so as to make sure she got a real answer out of you. Yeah, and keep in mind also that we live in this bubble and we believe that we're at the beginning of, of a gigantic revolution. Every time the numbers come out, it's like it's these incremental, you know, look, 1% more. Uh, it, or you, it might sound big to say you're doubling the number of streamers. It's like, yeah, we went from 2% to 4%. It's like right. there's a long way for, for us to go. So maybe that she was genuinely surprised and, and didn't believe you. I just know my sister-in-law. She um, she's a Nielsen home, and and I, I just know that whole Nielsen set top is. Have you have you um either one of y'all seen seen I, this? When I, I no, I was a Nielsen home, and we did we filled out stuff in the postcard, and I lied all the way across it. Wait, well, what's the set top box like? So they so they brought her a big old set top box with um Omaha steaks and a basket, <laughs> and a fifty dollar check. So basically, every hour she has to press a button saying she's watching TV. If it's like you have a, a remote control that has eight buttons on it for each member of the family to say who's watching TV. Is it, you know, someone the age of 18 to 24 or, and so forth have to do that every hour when your when your um, television is on. It's very yeah. annoying. In other words, that that's how they track all this stuff. Right. Based because they can, they can record what's being on the television, but they can't mm -hmm. record at least yet who's watching it. So they have that little button press so that it's like, right. okay, anybody in the room, you know, dad's got his button, mom's got her button. There's even a guest button in most of these setups as far as I know. Yep. Yep. And right on. I guess, uh, man, I guess that's it. If you guys want to send us feedback, make sure to send it over to uh, fr at twit.tv. 
We'll uh, make sure to read it on the air. Uh, apologies to everyone who didn't get a reply over the last couple of weeks. It's been extraordinarily busy. We've both been traveling around like crazy. But we're back in the game. We got our act together. We'll be responding to you guys. We do read as many of those as we could possibly get to. Tom, anything else we got to say before we wrap up? Yeah, no more of these European-influenced labor holidays. We are going to be doing shows every Monday <laughs> from now until we honor the veterans, I think. <laughs> to find us always live, live.twit.tv at 3.30 p.m. Pacific, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. You can, as Brian said, email us at framerate at twit.tv and find us always looking at you, waiting for you at twit.tv slash fr. Look up our... Uh, our chicken challenge on Google Plus, too, if you've been cutting the cord. We'd like to hear from you there. See you later. Yeah. Thank you, JJ Valentine.com. Oh, my God. I almost forgot to say goodbye to me. JJ. Thank you so much, JJ. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward. Looking forward to it. He's looking forward to it. He just came on for the spoiler zone. I say just get to it. Let's do the oh, spoiler God. zone. That's all anyone's uh, waiting for. Silent Green is people. Ryan, you screwed oh. me up by email address. That's my that's my thing. Oh, <laughs> but, yeah, like, sorry, I totally sorry. got my app. I, 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 it's still, we're just off our game, man. We're just no, you, don't you, have, you had I, the high intensity intro. Oh, okay. I had the professional Dragon. reminded people to write us. You know, you it's come, not man. Uh, we'll, we'll, JJ, I will we'll we apologize. We'll get it back together, I promise. Oh no, uh, are you sure it wasn't me? No, <laughs> it's definitely, definitely, no. I mean, maybe, maybe. definitely not you. <laughs> uh, you. So we're, we're we're taking just a little bit of time for uh for the exodus to to and I've never been there in the Twit Studios when the spoiler zone so starts and everybody physically leaves. But I hear it's oh, something really? to behold. I'm seeing it in the chat room right now. It's like turning on a light in a flop house in Austin, Texas. The roaches just scatter. <laughs> Well, I'm excited uh, about oh, it. Because. There you go. And as a matter of fact, you see, we just saw uh, Patrick Delahanty's doing the switching because Jason made sure to get out of there. Uh, all right. So I guess we we got to go in order. Um, would it would it be fair to say? Let's start with a bird's eye view here. Would it be fair to say that this episode, more than any other in the series, was positively tantric? In oh, which dude. in which I, I mean, you were just waiting, waiting, and then. There was a very strong climax at the end after an hour of just, uh, yeah. Yeah. it took its time in a way that I've never seen. And then the your roommate do. opened the door and said, credits. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, oh, man. This was one of the, oh, couldn't be a better episode, you know. Just um, when, when I don't even know how, where to start. I mean, because you. Vince Gilligan is such a brilliant writer, you know, Gilligan. and it's just like, man, he, he, he knows how to toy with my, um, my moral compass because, you know, you're like, I don't want Walt to win, but you, then you're like, oh man, I don't want Hank to catch him. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, and how about that scene where he's in the car and for the first time in a long time, Walt is powerless. Yes. Walt, yeah. Walt yes. Heck cannot affect events. And that, and I remember thinking, well, and, and the weird part, of course, we have the fact, and, and this is the brilliance of, of the show, of course, is we have the, the hard knowledge of knowing that uh, a year and change from now, he's still alive and coming back to get a gun to ostensibly, you know, have revenge on someone. So, you know, something happens here, but it's like um, he does a great job of like checkmate. You're, he's out of moves. What can possibly happen? And yeah. uh, and the fact that, uh, you know, this was a moment of revelations. First of all, I think I think um, from a character standpoint, this may be the single episode where we see Hank at his best in the entire series. Um, uh, he is a punching bag and a joke at the beginning of the series. Um, you, you hate him for being so cock, uh, cocksure and, uh, and incompetent at many times. And the fact that, you, you know, under his nose all this time this happens, then you see Hank's rage or whatever. Uh, you're sympathetic for him during his recovery, but this is the first time that you actually find yourself uh, like like rooting for him. Like 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 he did it. That was a legitimately brilliant plan. He uh, right. he did a great job of teasing the information out. That that bit with uh, with with fake uh, Jesse Pinkman's brains being blown out was was stellar. Uh, and he got his guy. And at some level, I couldn't help being 
happy for him in that. And that was an emotion that I never experienced in the entire series up until this yeah. moment. It's it's like I, that moment. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, no, no. no you know, like, by all means. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, want Huel, I want Huel to have his own show. You, yeah. <laughs> you know, and and then also with 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 Walt, one of the, the big things is when he was talking to the you know the Nazis about trying to get rid of Jesse. I mean, even then, he even showed emotion then that he even cared. He didn't want him to have fear, wanted to be quick. It's just really, he started showing a little emotion about, well, my son's gone bad. I'm gonna have to, you know, it was like he's down. putting down a dog, huh? Yeah. Like, ah, oh, he's been such a good dog. But, you know, yeah. it's time. I uh, I also am sad that Hank is dead. And the reason well, I say Hank is dead is because that was clearly a goodbye call to Marie. Oh, like, yeah. That was, well, but, that was such a touching, like, you know, I love you, honey. I, I, almost, I don't think it was a weakness, but I almost feel like they telegraphed it too much. To the point where I'm now wondering, like, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he will survive. And that was just a trap. But then I'll feel cheap. Like, that's bad writing. If he does die, which I think he will, it's such, such a sweet, sweet moment. What color did he have on? He had on black. So did, so did Gomi. Gomi yep. had on black as well. Oh, man. And that's Gomi. one thing about Vince Gilligan. Walt had white on that day. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's just one of the things that he plays with colors a lot. You know, Vince does. And I, I think, you know, it's, I think Jesse had black on too, but I don't, I don't know if he's dead yet or not. I'll say because, this much. Uh, but, uh, I mean, uh, no, go ahead. I say, man, that color thing, we can, uh, that's, that's a, that's a snake bit. We could just, we could just point out all the colors. Uh, but the, uh, I'll say this much that, uh, that may be my, my single all time favorite Saul Goodman appearance in the entire series, even though he's only there. For, for like 45 <laughs> seconds when he's talking to, How to Walt cool Jr. How cool was it to see him talking to Walt Jr.? I know. <laughs> Don't drive drunk, kid. But if you do, call me. I mean, it's just amazing. Hey, you're that guy from the billboard. And suddenly, for the first time, really, he was the guy from the billboard, right? We saw his public right. persona, which we almost never see. Yeah, right. yeah, correct. Uh, and how great, um, man, that, uh, okay. The, the, it's funny because we followed all of these multiple threads and that moment of of Hank realizing, and of course, um, how great is that moment where they go out of their way to show how totally and royally screwed Hank is when he's driving out desperately, like going out of his way. And again, they're smart on the writing, but but they specifically had him list off all the people he's killed and all the reasons, you know, it's like, you know, this is being recorded and you're just hearing him oh, be yeah. like, okay, and the trap is shut. And then yeah. he and then he gets out there. Uh, and it's that that moment of hubris where it's like a guy who regards himself, and then he finally says, "Like you're so stupid, Jesse." And then, uh, and then you know, totally gets uh, you know captured. But then there's that moment where you're like, uh, I remember asking Bonnie, I was like, "Why is there not a helicopter following him?" And Bonnie's like, "Well, because they don't have the reason. They they can't go. You know, that's the reason right. they have to get they have to get the evidence to get to here." And then you have that slow dawning horror. Of like they're those three are just really out there all by themselves and there's not yep. a lot and then and then the oh just the the, the sinking pit of your stomach when uh, when when the neo Nazis show up it's just ugh, it's amazing. I don't understand it's why they didn't just show them the badges that it probably didn't uh, what well know. keep in mind um uh, uh I mean I you're, you're you're smiling now but I actually had to think about them like why wouldn't they show the badges but then you realize that's a really great way to get somebody to drop their gun down oh. just enough is to tell them and to reach back. And in all seriousness, that was the I had exactly that same process of thought, which is like, oh, I guess they could just show them the badges. Oh, those guys, they don't give a crap about the badges. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. <laughs> Man. Uh, oh. Yeah. Good. Good job. Can't oh, wait for next week. One, one last question before we wrap up. Jesse Pinkman. Last last we see him, he's opening the car door. Whence goes Jesse Pinkman from there? And he could if be we're, dead. We're but I don't think any of us believe that. Uh, people in the chat room saying he's wearing red. I don't remember. But um, does he run into the hills? What What does he do? Where does he go? I actually think there's some way that the face-off ends and Walt gets away and is left with the only play being to be on the run. Um, I actually... <sighs> Maybe, maybe, maybe Hank's buddy dies, but I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Hank doesn't die. Just because just because the writing was so clear that Hank was gonna die. I I'm I'm 
feeling like he won't. You like, may be feeling- right, but I will feel cheated. I will feel like that was not a good fake out. But as a couple like, of things, now Hank's going to be on the talking bad um, next week. Mm-hmm. And Gomi was on this mm-hmm. past week, right? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, the, oh, and, and the lipstick and Todd. Todd, Todd worries. Oh me, yeah. Man. Oh dude, Todd's Todd's the greatest character in the series. Like <laughs> like his whole his whole uh you know good boy next door trying to make it in the criminal underworld. I love what they're doing with that. And in fact, oh and the that fact that is, he didn't even blink when Walt said we need to take out Jesse, and he's like, okay, okay. So you want pepperoni <laughs> would, with that? Got it. No I would totally watch an entire series just of Todd and, or yeah. a character like Todd uh, about right. somebody who you know does daily affirmations and has a list of goals that involve. Yeah. Becoming a criminal uh, overlord. Breaking Todd. Yeah. Excellent. Right on. All right. Well, I guess that's right. it, huh? Yeah. Thanks, y'all. Uh, appreciate uh, hanging out with us. Of course, we do the spoiler zone when Brian and I have both seen the episode and can talk about it. And Breaking Bad has been one of those where we definitely are both going to keep watching it. So we'll keep doing that to the end of that season. And uh, I haven't heard back whether we'll ever be able to break these out as a separate episode or not. But keep my fingers crossed on that, too. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Right on. Bye. Guys, guys, whatever. Bye. Bye.